So NASA's sending the first mango out into space, what variety would it be? First mango into space? Um, I don't know, maybe. So we're here uh, talking root stocks a little bit with some grafting, and we're talking about the average home, uh, backyard uh, grower who has a little skill in grafting. And so does that, should they be looking specifically for a turpentine stock or would any stock be okay? So uh, this actually comes up every once in a while periodically because we get, we sell a lot of budwood to customers, people that want to graft at home. Um, and a lot of that is within Florida. Um, and there is this perception that they need to be using turpentine rootstock. And we get people that are looking all over the place trying to find turpentine seeds or trying to find turpentine rootstocks and pots or whatever. And if you're some person at home grafting mangoes, um, you know, you really don't need to concern yourself with what kind of rootstock you're using most of the time, especially here in Florida. Um, you know, if it's making a nice graftable shoot, use it because uh, the chances you're going to see a performance difference between it and turpentine are not very high. Um, now, it's a different story if the rootstock is not healthy or it's a runt or whatever, but most homeowners can just plant mango seeds of whatever they've got, and as long as they're making healthy rootstock, use it and uh, it should work out okay. Is there a recommended, say, graft? I know there's different types of grafting, different methods. Is there a one that maybe a homeowner might find more successful that may be different than your technique? Well, I think in most cases, homeowners will find success using cleft or veneer grafts, and between the two of them, I usually prefer cleft grafts because um, the, the cut is not, the longitudinal cut is not very long, so like, uh, it's a little more simple and quick uh, and easier to match uh, and less opportunity for error, I call it. So I think most homeowners probably should just do, stick to cleft grafts um, and they work fine with mango. So um, stick with what works. Yeah, I mean, like if you want to try veneer, you can. Obviously, there's lots of other methods of grafting besides those two. And most of our trees are produced with a different method than those two, but we cleft graft a few trees here and there. Your method? No, <laughs> but uh, you well, I mean, like we, 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 yeah. I mean, like we can go, you know, off the rails on all kinds of uh, grafting techniques and stuff, but we won't. Yeah. But uh, anyway, but with rootstock, um, we do use a lot of turpentine. Okay, it's probably most of what we use. Most of the other nurseries use it, um, but we use non-turpentine stocks too. Um, turpentine is readily available. They make lots of fruit, lots of uh, polyembryonic seeds that come true to type 80 plus percent of the time. Um, and they make a rootstock that we can use pretty quickly. Um, you know, that's kind of proven, if you will, in Florida soils. Um, you know, but like it's not a necessity by any stretch of the imagination. You know, we just, we like working with them because they're easy to graft with, you know. Um, but uh, there's lots of other stuff that makes good new stock too. So don't think that you have to grab your turpentine. And um, for that homeowner doing it, and we just say we planted our seed, it sprouted. About what height would you recommend uh, that tree getting up to before we uh, do with that? I don't think there is any hard and fast rule with that. I mean, like, um, you know, one thing I will say is that it's probably more about the thickness of the stem um, and the scion that you're using in terms of the ease of matching it. But the best recommendation I can give you is trying to line up one side of the cambium tissue on your scion and your stock. And if you try to line, because what happens is people will try to line up both sides, you know, or all sides, and they end up lining up nothing. So all you need is one. Okay, Guilty. so just, yeah, a lot of people Guilty. do that. Guilty, did it. Amateur grafters do that I've all learned. the time, <laughs> and they end up with a high fail rate because of it. Just try to line up one side, you'll see a, a much better success rate if you're an amateur grafter, if you do that. So what is the process for someone to order budwood from you? We have a system where on our website, people can submit request lists once we've opened that up for Mango, which I think we're gonna do this week. And uh, that process is such that you submit a request list, you pay a deposit, because I have to go out in the field and check. And if you don't pay the invoice, then I just wasted my time. But uh, anyway, you know, we check everything on your list. And uh, you give us the type of scion and the amount of that variety you want in that list. And we go and we look and we see if we can find active buds on those uh, trees that we can clip. 
Uh, amateur grafters usually do much better with um, scions that have swelling buds, as we call them. Um, that's not a necessity for grafting, okay? Let me make that clear. But for people that don't have a lot of experience and their rate of take is not so great, we want to arm them with the uh, you know, best possible chance of success. And so that's why we look for swelling material. And then we re once we've checked them, we send the uh, customer a invoice for what was ready. So let's suppose you gave us a list of seven or eight varieties and only five of them actually had swelling buds on them. Well, we will send you an invoice for just those five. If you don't require swelling material and you can work with dormant stuff, let us know and we can accommodate you. But generally speaking, if you're submitting a request via our website, it's for material that has swelling buds. And then once you pay the invoice, it has to be paid within like 72 hours or something because obviously bug is a time sensitive thing. If they flush growth, they're no good. Um, so you have a certain period of time to pay the invoice. And then once you pay the invoice, we ship out the budget to you uh, via Express, I know, FedEx uh, Express. I know personally, like I had bigger success once I found and started using swelling buds. The other question I have real quickly is, from the time you cut it to the time the person grafts it, what should that window or time frame be, approximately? Well, okay. I, I, mean, I know like, there's variables on how good somebody I, okay. can graft. So the and, simple thing is, the quicker that you can gra uh, graft them from the time they've been clipped, the better off you are. However, I have grafted material that was well over a week old, sometimes a couple weeks old, and I still got stuff to take. So, but they do lose viability the longer they are removed from the time that they were harvested. A lot of that has to do with how they're stored. When we ship budwood, we make sure that that budwood is in moist media and that way they do not dry out if they're sitting for a long period of time because the delivery service failed to deliver them or whatever. Um, but typically when we ship them out and they're going express, they're getting there two days after we just harvest them and they're fine. I and mean, the, the viability is very, very good at that stage. So, but I would certainly encourage people to graft them as soon as they can. So, um, and if they have to store them, they can store them in refrigeration, not freezing conditions, refrigeration. Temperatures in the 40s or 50s are okay. You want to avoid any temperatures in the 30s because there's an opportunity sometimes for the scion to experience freezing and that will kill the viability of it. And a lot of home residential refrigerators have freezing pockets in them depending on what temperature they're being kept. So be careful with that. But um, otherwise, use them as quickly as you can once you've got them. Any Thanks. differences in viability by variety, perhaps? Yes, uh, some mangoes graft easier than others. Uh, that's certainly the case, um, even for us, you know, when, when we produce them commercially. Um, so some of them are a little more fungal prone, and uh, they can get, you know, that's another reason, uh, another thing I should have mentioned, um, tips for amateur grafters. You know, if you can keep your uh, grafting tools sterile, that includes your knife and uh, any pruning shears you happen to be using, uh, that helps. Um, so keeping the pathogen out of the incisions and just um, rub it with alcohol would be your suggestion, or rub it. Yeah, with you don't have to use rubbing alcohol, okay. but it works. Um, you know, you can use hydrogen peroxide. You can use like a diluted bleach solution, um, things like that. So um, regardless, you're just trying to sterilize your tools and make sure that you're not introducing a pathogen into the tissue when you're making the graft. First mango in the space. Um, I don't know, maybe one of those ones that Richard Campbell named after planets. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Venus mango, there you go. Yeah. There was, there's Venus. Yeah. Uh, and then there was one they named Martian Pride. We have one called Mercurial Marvel. So maybe one of those. Uh, there was this mango that, I think it came from the USDA, and supposedly it's not very good, but they called it the Galaxy Mango at Pine Island Nursery. Maybe they could send that thing into space. <laughs> Besides that, I don't know. I mean, uh, for historical record, I don't know what would be appropriate. Um, but, <laughs> I don't know. Somebody will have to do it someday. I don't know if a mango's ever been in space. It's always a first. Yeah.